Hey what's going on everybody in today's video we will be making an expense tracker application using python and in that process we will also learn how to program with databases and also creating apis so before we begin coding this thing let's uh, let's decide on a few functionalities which we would want the application to have right so uh, the top two things which come to mind when i hear a expense tracker application is that one it should track your expenses uh so you can say look i spent so and so amount of money on food and it should somehow log that information somewhere which you can retrieve later on the second thing which i uh, want the app to do is uh, when i tell my app i want to see all my previous expenditures i wish that it should read all the information which it already stored somewhere uh, aggregate the amount and give me a total expenditure uh, which i have incurred So these two functionalities is what we will be implementing in this application and we will be making an API of functions which will help us do all of this. So the way we're going to interact with our API at least in this video is through a command line interface. Uh an API can be interacted with in pretty much any way you imagine, right? So you can make a desktop application to use your API, you can make a Android application which uses your API you can make a website which uses your API and a lot of other things right but uh to keep it really simple in this video we will be making a command line interface which interacts with our API and acts like an expense tracker application so here is a sample usage of our expense tracker command line application so the name of the application is spent So when you open up your terminal and you type spent it should indirectly call uh, our expense tracker application. So after you type spent you can say uh, 100 and then food. So what that means is that you spent 100 of whatever currency you use on the category food. So it should take in this amount and store it against the category food. You can also say spent 100 on transport and you can also specify a optional message so if you want to elaborate uh, on where exactly you spend the money on uh, if the category alone is not enough to uh, specify what the expenditure was on you can also type in a optional message a more detailed message uh, describing how the expenditure happened so these two uh, commands would be used to log your expenditure into our application Now when we want to retrieve our uh, information we would want to use these two commands over here. So uh spent is the name of the application again and when you type view that would show you a list of all the expenses which you have incurred since the start of time. Right? So it will show you an aggregated amount that you've spent so and so amount of money uh since when you started using this application uh but sometimes that is just too much information right we generally don't want to know all of the expenditure which we even incurred so in that case you can also specify spent view and then a category name like food so it would only show you all your expenditure in that particular category i mean you can go a bit more uh, overboard with this and uh, you know design a, a range of dates for which you want to retrieve your expenditures like say on a monthly basis or like a 10 day period or like from a given start date to a given end date i mean all sorts of things can be done but in this video i'm going to keep it really simple and just do it like this but the most important thing uh is that we would want to uh do an initialization so when we say spent in it we would want the application to initialize a user profile for us so that we can store all of our data into a database so when i say spent in it what it would do or at least what i want the application to do is that i wanted to initialize a new database a completely empty database with a structure with a certain schema and store it in a place such that when i say spent 100 on food it should have a place where it can store that information in so that is the work of spent in it and before using our application the person using it has to first use this command to initialize the application right so this is the intended usage of our application and now we can 
begin coding the API. So the first function in our API, which we would want to write is the initialization function. So this function as defined by the doc string over here, it should initialize a new database to store all the expenditures. So to work with databases in our Python program, we will be using the SQLite 3 standard Python library, which is uh, included in every Python installation. There's no need to install it from anywhere. And the first thing which we would want to do is to make a new database. So for that, we can say connection is equal to db.connect and we have to specify a uh, name to go along for our database. So for now, I'm going to say spent.db. So this will create a new database if it doesn't already exist. And if it does already exist, then it would uh, connect to that DB and give us a connection object. So now that we have connected to our database, we would initialize a cursor by saying connection dot cursor. And now using this cursor, we can uh, execute our SQL queries on our database. So the first SQL query, which we need to execute is a create table query. So I'm going to say SQL is equal to, and I'm going to initialize a new string. So the SQL command, which we would have to execute is create table. If not exists table names with expenses here. And then we can specify the properties. So I would want the table to have a field to store our amount. So amount would be a number. And then we would also want a field so that we can store our category, which would be a string. We would also need a field to store our optional message. So which is a string again, and we can also throw in a date of when the expense happened as a string variable. I mean, we can use a, a date time object of SQL, but let's just keep things really simple and uh, put it that way. So let's explain this uh, SQL query uh, on a very brief level, right? So I want to create a new table. So why a table? Because everything in a relational da uh, database management system, our DBMS is in the form of a table. A table is just a basically like a table, right? So it has rows and columns where you can store your information in. So I want to create the table. I want to call it expenses. And I would only want to create the table if it does not already exist. So the fields which I want the table to have is an amount, a category, a message and a date. So now that we have defined an SQL query, we can go ahead and execute it. So for that, we can say cur dot execute and we can pass in the SQL variable which contains our query. So after execution of any SQL query in order for you to store that information permanently or to make changes permanently, we would want to commit uh, that change. So we can use con.commit to make that change. And that's pretty much it for our initialization function. So we can call this function really quick. And I'm gonna go over to my terminal. So I can say Python spent dot py and it executes and I can say ls and I can see that there is a spent dot db which is created. So our program works. All right. So the initialization function is now defined. Right. So the next function which we would want to write is the log function, which would log the expenditure into the database. And it takes in three parameters. The first being the amount, which is a number. The second one is a category, which is expected to be a string. And the message is an optional parameter, which is also a string. So since message is an optional parameter, I have set it to an empty string, but the user can override it uh, if he specifies a parameter over there. So this function would want to connect to the database and then store all of this information into the database and then commit that change. So the majority of the code would be similar to our code over here. So I can just copy that and paste it over here. So I would want to connect to the database initially and then make cursor object and then define a, a query, which I would then execute and then commit that information. The only thing which changes over here is the SQL query. So I can just remove that from here. 
and the query which we would want to use is uh, insert into expenses so i want to insert some information into my table which is called expenses values the values which i want to insert into our database the amount so i'm going to specify a placeholder over there the second information which we have to uh, insert in our database is the category on which we spent the food which is a string so i'm going to enclose that in a pair of quotes and then specify the placeholder the third information which we would want to insert is uh, again a string which is the message uh, which is optional by the way and the fourth one is the time of expenditure time as well as date of the expenditure so that is the fourth place holder which is again a string so i'm going to specify a pair of quotes over there and that's it so now we have to fill in uh, the actual variables which are a part of those place holders so for that we can say format the first argument is the amount the second argument is the category the third argument is the message and the fourth argument is a date now hold on date is not yet defined right so we can define a new date uh, with date time dot now and we can typecast that to a string and i'm also going to take care of the import so i'm going to say from date time import date time this technically should be able to log some information into our database so let us call this function log and the amount which i want to set is say 120 and i want to spend it on transport and we can also probably give in a message saying that uh, uber to the theater something like that and we can run this so i'm going to go over to my terminal and say python spent dot ui and it returns no error so i can assume that the information has successfully been entered into the database so that takes care of the log function so the third and the last function which we are going to define is the view function which returns a list of all the expenditure incurred as well as the total expense and if a particular category is specified it would only give that information for that particular category so yet again most part of this function would be exactly the same as the previous function so we can just paste that template and only the sql query would change and then we would execute that query however since we are not making any changes to the inherent structure of database we don't have to commit anything we are only reading from the database not writing to it so there's no need of commit right and the sql query which we would want to write is select star from expenses where category is equal to and we can specify a place holder over there and then format category so this would select all of the information from the expenses uh, table where the category is the same as the category which we want now hang on there is a tiny bit of a problem here what if the category is not defined so a category is an optional parameter right so the person can just do spend view to get all of the information of all the expenses or he can also do a uh, spend view food so then in that case we have a specific category so we would want to handle this a bit differently so if category is defined only then i would want to do this right otherwise the sql query would just be select star from expenses and that's it so this would be the sql query in the case where there is no category to be specified so we will just do select all the information from the expenses table now we would also want to store this information uh, which we just retrieved right so after we execute uh, that command we will do a uh, results is equal to cur dot fetch all so we will fetch all of the results which are 
uh, SQL query returned. So this would give us a list of lists of all the expenditures from our application. Now hang on, there is yet another thing which we would have to do, which is the total expense, right? So we want to calculate the total amount which we have incurred after we sum it all up. So to get the total expenditure, we can define yet another uh, SQL query, let's call it SQL2. Very bad naming, but uh, it's all right. Uh, and over here, we can just say, uh, instead of this exact thing, we can say select sum of amount. So this would actually sum up all of the individual amounts from our table and return that to us. And we can do the same for this one as well. So I'm going to call that SQL2 and then select sum of amount from expenses. So and I would also execute uh, the SQL2 statement and then the amount would be or let's call it the total amount which would be uh, let's, let's put that over here and then the total amount would then be cur dot fetch one since it's the the total amount is just one uh, specific value we can just do fetch one instead of fetch all it would still be the same and then let's uh, index into the zeroth element because it's returned as a list. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we can return the total amount as well as the results. And that should technically work. So let's test this out and let's call the view function. I'm say I'm gonna say print view of category I want to specify as food and then let's also do a print view of nothing in there and let's see what this returns. So do keep in mind that we uh, while testing this particular function we actually inserted some dummy data into our database so right now we should be able to see that same data. So let's run this and see what we get. All right. So the first result which we get is a none and a empty list because hey, we have no category with food because the only information which we have inside is of the category transport. I had actually forgotten. So that is good. That means it's working. And over here we can see that we have the first item as a 120, which is the total expenditure. And then the remaining one, we have a complete list of the expenses. So the first expense here is 120 on transport and with the message Uber to the theater and the date time as well. So we can say that this uh, function is now working. So let's remove that over here. So I guess that completes our uh, expense tracker API. Uh, we have all the basic functionality uh, which we wanted in our application ready. So we can now, uh, you know, combine this API with a interface of choice and then, you know, make an application. So in the next video, we will be interfacing a command line interface with our API and we're going to be completing this application. So please do watch that video. Yeah, so you will find all of this code in my GitHub repository, which is linked in the description. And please do feel free to clone that repository, make your own changes, add your own features, experiment, and uh, maybe even send in a pull request. So maybe I can incorporate your changes into the code base. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, thanks for watching.